Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to actually make some things, and um, we're going to be using these uh, tissue paper rolls, and, um, and these are little discs that I've cut out of some thin cardboard. Um, I needed to have thin enough cardboard that I could cut it with my little shape cutter. Uh, but I wanted it to be sturdier, so I'm just gluing two of the discs together. Now, I'm using for this one uh, two and a half inches. That's how big my circle is. And I'm just gluing it together really well. And then I'm going to glue one of the discs that I have uh, glued together on the top and the bottom of each of these uh, tissue paper rolls. So I'm making these as either bowl fillers or um, actually these are for the most part going to be put back uh, for part of my Christmas decor because I'm adding a hanger to these and uh, they'll make good little ornaments. Now, I'm doing two different styles. One is more of a farmhouse primitive style, and one will be shabby chic. So, um, I'm just gluing all these together, and once I get them all together, then obviously I'm going to be painting them. And since most of these are going to be shabby chic, I'm painting them in the color buttercream. But then uh, for a couple of them, I'm going to paint them to look like wood. So these get two to three coats, depending on how much I felt, felt like it needed to um, give it a kind of a thicker look, I guess is what I'm going for. Two coats would cover it, but the more layers that you put on, the more thickness you're adding to your to your spool around the bottom and the top so that's why I did more than just a couple of um, coats and for the ones that I wanted to look like wood I am painting them in the color pine cone and I've not even cleaned my brush because I like that little bit of the white that kind of blends down into it and gives it more of a wood grain look now, a lot of this is going to be covered, so it doesn't have to perfectly look like wood. But as you can see there, I'm getting these little bits of the white, and I need to keep those going in the same direction on the top and the bottom uh, so that it looks like wood grain. So I want to create the illusion that the ribbon that I'm going to be putting on this, which I think on this one I put lace on it, I want to give the illusion that there's more lace on it than there will actually be because I don't want to waste too much of my good lace on this, but I want the lace to be showing. So I cut some strips of the fabric Warm and Natural, which is actually uh, it's a, a fabric that I use in a lot of my crafts but um, also it's a quilt batting of sorts so uh, it's going to add some extra thickness so I just cover that the whole length of it and then uh, and then I can add my decorative lace now what I want this to look like is a spool that has um, some lace wrapped around it like it's a spool of lace and again, I don't want to waste too much lace. So that is gonna, uh, that fabric that I put on first will add enough thickness so that when I put just one layer of the lace on it, it'll look like it has lace wrapped and wrapped around it. But because this is shabby chic, I wanted to add a little script stamping on it here and there just to give it a little bit of character. I know that most spools aren't like this, but I'm just giving this a shabby chic look. And now I am loosely wrapping the lace that I want around this. And the reason that I'm loosely wrapping it is because, again, I want this to look like there's more on it. And if I were to try to wrap it too tight, 
it would not only squish the uh, warm and natural fabric down and take away some of that thickness that I have, but uh, it would also just, um, it would just be too smooth and not look like the lace was wrapped, if that makes sense. So just a little loose. You don't want it too loose. You don't want it to look messy, but you want it loose enough to where it looks a little more substantial. And now because I want to create a vintage look with these, uh, I'm taking some of my Distress ink, and I think that this is the color um, French linen. And, um, but I'm just adding a little age, mostly around the edges, but somewhat um, around the uh, center of the top and bottom of the spool. And now, because this lace is not quite as aged as I want it to be, I'm also rubbing some of this on onto the lace. And just be very careful. You don't want to get too heavy handed with that. But I'm just doing that to create just a little bit more of a vintage look. Now I kept getting uh, pulled away from my crafting today with customers. So uh, I kept forgetting that I didn't restart my video and I, I didn't get some of the footage that I intended to get, but I'm doing enough of these that I can show you exactly how I did every step. And here I am starting another one. Uh, again, I added the uh, Warm and Natural and then, um, and then covered that with another lace. And this lace was vintage enough that I didn't have to worry about uh, using my antiquing ink on the lace part. So I just wrapped, as you can see, one layer and just slightly loose, but not so much that it looks messy. And then I just secured the end of that uh, onto the spool with some hot glue. And now I'm going to add a uh, some straight pins in it and because I haven't been able to find some really substantial straight pins which is what I wanted that I had to just get the largest ones that I could find and uh, I wanted the ones with the pearl colored end and uh, so I'm going to use those but um, I've got my little bit pearl beads out and I'm going to put a larger bead on the end of that so i will have uh, there will be the small bead there on the very end and then i'll take some hot glue and add another larger bead up next to that and that will make that straight pin a lot more substantial and i'll show you here on this next one i just took a one pin and then a larger bead and i think one or two of those in some of these spools i did more than one bead on but for the most part i just added a larger bead up next to the smaller bead and i just took a little bit of hot glue to kind of secure that on so it would stay in place and that's a good way to make your straight pins look more substantial Obviously, you're going to take away from the length of those when you do that, but uh, I didn't worry about that because what I do is I just don't stick it in quite as much, and then it looks like it's a little bit larger than it is. And um, I added just a little bit of glue so those don't get pulled out. Um, and you're going to take, or you can take that pin and go all the way through the tube uh, some of mine went all the way through the tube, and then some I just pinned down into the actual fabric that's on it. And then I just took some lace and, uh, and made a hanger for the top. So I just glued one end down and then glued the other end down, and that made a loop for the hanger. And now I'm just kind of making a little embellishment for the top just by rolling up some... Um, thicker lace to make a flower and then I just glued it there over where I added the hanger and now I'm just going to add some little pearls in different sizes and other 
embellishments on some of these i add lace to the top as extra embellishment and uh, just whatever i feel like looks good at this point if you had some um if you had a little older style thimble that would be pretty to add if you had a very small pair of scissors you could attach that around the spool you could attach a little vintage uh, pack of buttons and on some of these i'm even gonna uh, just take a little piece of cardboard and roll some other lace or thread around it and attach that but I think anything sewing related would look good on these. You could add buttons. If you had an older style um, needle threader, you could put that on there. Uh, you could even put some large needles uh, kind of weaved through the side of it. So just add anything that you think will give it more of a vintage shabby chic look. And you guys know me and neutrals. I really love neutrals, so this one is, mo is more neutral, but you could add color. Uh, this would be pretty in pinks or light blues. Anything that is a soft color would still give it a shabby chic look. So here's the one that I painted wood color, and, um, and I felt like it needed a little bit richer look to it so i'm just going over this with some clear wax and that made it look a, a lot like wood so if you're just uh, not looking really close then it just looks like a wooden spool and then every finish that you add to this is just going to make it more and more sturdy once that cures now, some people put a little Christmas tree in their craft room, and these would be so cute on that sort of a tree. And um, these are not limited to Christmas. Uh, I am doing some, um, some stocking ahead with my crafts for Christmas, so I am going to be using these for that, but they're not at all limited to Christmas. They can just be a bowl filler or just something that you sit around to decorate with in your craft room. Now I'm just taking my little finger sander and just smoothing those edges a little bit more. By smoothing those edges, it makes them look a little bit thicker. And now for this one, because I want it to have more of a prim primitive look, I have some torn strips of gingham that I'm just wrapping around this one. And I didn't bother to do the warm and natural first on this one because I don't mind using a little bit more fabric in this um, and so I'm not as um, selective and as stingy with this fabric as I am my laces but I just wrap it around and cover it almost completely you can let a little bit of that wood look show at the top and the bottom these are just really fun to make and i'm always uh, happy to find a new craft that i can do especially ornament that i can do with tissue paper rolls because so many of us go through many uh, way too many of these and i hate to just throw them all away when there are um, things that can be made with them so once I get that glued on, then I'm just gonna start to embellish this one. Now this would be pretty to do a bunch of these in just different primitive fabrics and use this as a bowl filler. I think these make really good bowl fillers for um, a primitive style decor. And here I am attaching a rusty safety pin on this as an extra embellishment um, and i was just thinking when you're if you're using these as a bow filler bow filler you could use you could do these in different colors of gingham and then around christmas time you could uh, fill your bowl with cr 
Christmas colors, or at least the Christmas colors that you decorate with. And for fall, you could use more fall colors. And um, I think that would be a really good decorating idea with these. Now I found this scrapbook paper that I'm gonna glue to the top of this and then cut it to fit. And uh, I just feel like that's gonna be a prettier look for the spool. And then I just trimmed away the excess and uh, used my Distress ink around the edges of that. Uh, again, I did use my finger sander and did a little extra sanding to smooth that down. I really like these little finger sanders for small jobs. They really do the trick and the little sandpaper on them lasts a lot longer than you would, ex would expect. And I'll add that little finger sander in my description along with the Distress Ink and this little ink blending tool that I use for so many projects. But here I've just wrapped some primitive fabric around it and, um, and then distressed around the top. And now I'm adding some jute twine as a hanger and I'll embellish somewhat over the top of that. Again, most of these I'm going to put back uh, to uh, sell as ornaments. And here I have uh, glued a little thimble on top and I'm putting a little uh, rusty safety pin in this and I'm going to add in the description where you can buy these on Amazon uh, but and these the particular ones that I'm using today I did buy these um, but uh, you can uh, you can rest your own safety pins and just by letting them soak in uh, vinegar and salt overnight and then the next day then put some uh, peroxide over the top of them and, and they'll rust now these uh, this is just a little scrap of fabric and um, i just wanted something that had a vintage look to it and in this case a little bit more primitive and i'm just i folded it in no particular fashion i didn't want it to be a perfect fold and then i just glue that to the top and then I'll add some buttons over the top of that to embellish that. But you could make these in more of a farmhouse style with maybe uh, black and white gingham and um, or you could just use them as just the wooden spool itself and maybe do some decoupage on it or maybe do some stamping on it. Uh, but I think these make good little ornaments, and uh, they're a good size for that, using that tissue paper roll. Or you can use a paper towel roll, and um, and then the circles that I'm using are not going to be large enough for that. But when I make my larger one, I'm going to use uh, the ends of a spool that ribbon comes on. And I just found one of those that was large enough. And I pulled the ends off that after um, I used up all the ribbon. And a lot of times, actually, I take the ribbon off those and wrap it around something else anyway. But uh, that's a good size when you're using the paper towel roll. And then I cut part of the paper towel roll off because um, it's not, uh, it's actually too long. Uh, here I am just taking a little piece of cardboard, and this is just plain cardboard here, and I just cut a little piece in in a square or a rectangle, and then I'm just going to wrap another. Uh, I think I wrapped some some uh, lighter colored fabric around this one. I think I just used some coffee stained tea towel that I had wrapped or that I had um, torn in strips. And so I wrapped it around this. And that's something that people used to do years ago. If they had scraps of something left over, they would wrap it around a piece of cardboard to keep up with it. And so I thought that would be a good little primitive addition to this. So I just glued that on. And um, I think that's all that I did to this one. 
and then I'm going to make one of the um, larger ones from the paper towel roll. So I cut maybe uh, a couple, few, probably closer to four inches off this paper towel roll. And the only thing when you cut that off, you need to make sure that you cut it very straight. Because if you don't cut it very straight, then your paper towel roll is going to uh, stand on there crooked and it's not going to look right. So that's the only thing in doing this is to make sure you get a good straight cut. And make sure that it's a level cut if that makes sense. And that's what happened here. It wasn't level. So I could tell the way it was standing that it wasn't going to stand up straight. So I had to cut a little bit more off. And, um, and then glue that on. I think these would look really good if, uh, if you wanted to decorate with them as a shelf sitter because if you had them on a high enough shelf that people aren't looking straight on them uh, you really can't tell the difference from a distance so and and what I do when I paint them is um, I paint the first coat on on a light coat actually and then I let that dry well and then just keep adding adding other coats of paint because the more paint that you add the thicker it's going to look and the more realistic it's going to look if that makes sense and the color i'm using here is uh, a dixie bell color pine cone and to me that gives it uh, the color of wood and uh, obviously you don't want to just do pine cone and not give a little bit of dimension to that color because you want it to look more like wood. So what I do is I put that coat on and once I've decided I have enough coats on there, this particular one I'm just doing one coat uh, because I'm just showing you how I did it. If you want to keep adding dimension, then uh, again, just keep adding uh, paint coats until you get the thickness that you want but on that last coat before it dries you want to go back with uh, just a dry brush of um, of the color buttercream and you're just going to very lightly drag that across your wet paint uh, because uh, it will give you more dimension and make it look more like wood grain and if you get heavy-handed and you get too much white then just drag some of that wet um, pine cone over the top of it and it's an easy fix and if you don't have enough that's still wet on the surface to drag over that just dip your paint back in that pine cone and add just a little bit more but you want some of that dry brush because what that makes it look like is wood grain. And you don't want much of that because this is the color of wood. So you just want enough to create that illusion of wood grain. So I dressed this one up also, but I'm not going to do that on camera. Uh, I just wanted to show you how I did that wood grain look on this larger spool. And how you can do the larger spool uh, just to put up for dec for decor even if you don't plan on decorating it. But I just thought I would share these with you guys. I know that it's very early for Christmas decorations. And that's why this one is not just for Christmas. It, it, it can be used for, um, as I said before, bowl fillers or just shelf decor or or it can be used for ornaments. And here are some of them that I did today. And um, again, you can create all different types of looks by adding uh, decoupage and things like that. These are my favorite here, though. I like the Victorian looking ones, the more shabby chic. Um, and I, I like the smaller ones that can be used for um ornaments now here is a hang tag that i got in the mail and this is from gracie redfield in california and uh, she is very talented i love that she has scripture on here i love that texture that she she creates with the lace over the color i think it's so pretty 
and I love that little pansy on there and those pearlescent buttons. I think this one is very pretty. Um, and Gracie sent me some gorgeous craft supplies, uh, just all kinds of beautiful things to craft with, and uh, I appreciate that so much. It's just so sweet that so many of you are willing to part with your beautiful craft supplies uh, because I know how hard they are to come by. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.